Well, right now, a warning for Southern California about the increased risk of a major earthquake. Experts say a series of small quakes along the San Andreas Fault could lead to a bigger one, and people in the area should revisit their emergency plans. This, of course, is the area of concern, as you're seeing on your screen, and it's no stranger to disaster. In 1994, the Northwood Ridge earthquake killed 57 people, injured thousands more, causing billions of dollars in property damage. Most recently, along the San Andreas Fault system, the same one we're talking about was that earthquake in South Napa and that happened in 2014 was a magnitude of 6.0 certainly caused a lot of damage as well uh, joining us Richard Allen the director of seismological lab at UC Berkeley Richard it's great to have you back in the program great to be with you you know it's interesting to look at earthquake forecasting as we're watching a major storm on the east coast of the United States we're all familiar with weather forecasting somewhat is forecasting an earthquake similar it's very similar in the sense that we sort of know that on any given day there's a chance of an earthquake and we can associate a probability with that. But then when we have a swarm like this, it increases the likelihood. It's the same thing as when there's a hurricane out in the ocean and we're trying to predict and estimate the likelihood that it will hit a particular coastal city. Same idea, we're trying to look into the future and come up with a likelihood. So tell us a little bit about the swarm that happened about seven days ago. What about that swarm was notable? So this was a small, a small swarm, well, I say small, a few hundred earthquakes. The largest earthquake was only about a magnitude 4.3, but it was down in the Salton Sea, very close to the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. And when we see events like this, it makes seismologists get a little concerned because it's a lot of activity close to a big fault, and we know that that increases the likelihood of a bigger earthquake on the big fault. And so that what's, that's what gets us all a little alarmed. So walk us through these numbers. The likelihood of an earthquake on any given day is what? So on a given day or within a seven day period, this advisory was for seven days. So in a seven day period, the likelihood of a big earthquake on the southern San Andreas is about one in 6,000. And so this forecast suggested a heightened alert about that, a heightened probability. What was that? So somewhere in the range of one in 3,000 to one in 100. So up to a 1% likelihood of a larger magnitude earthquake on the southern San Andreas. So that's suddenly a number that means something to all of us, I think. So what does that mean to you? Because those numbers, you know, when you hear one in 100 for, for me, you know, I'm thinking, okay, that sounds like that's, that's a high probability. But for someone like you who studies earthquakes on a regular basis, how do you see these numbers? Well, this is a big increase. I can tell you it makes the hair stick up on the back of my neck, and I start to think about what might actually happen if that big earthquake occurs today or in the course of this one-week period. So the one-week period actually ends today. We've had this warning for the last seven days, and so far, Richard, no earthquake. Does that mean we're in the clear? Well, of course, we're never in the clear, unfortunately. The earthquake can happen at any time on any day. But it does mean that we're sort of in the end of this sort of heightened um, period of concern. The likelihood of that big event happening actually decays over a period of days. And so the advisory for, for a seven-day window, which is now over, but so that means we're past this little hump. But nobody should think that means we're in the clear. We are never in the clear. We always have to be ready for that earthquake. You know, we're showing images from 1989 in San Francisco. That's my hometown. And certainly you, you see the devastation from a really large earthquake. As we finish up here, we're seeing some images as well from Napa in 2014. And it's easy to forget the damage that earthquakes can cause. I just wanted to ask you, Richard, before we let you go, one of the things I've seen written in a few different articles on this topic is that we're due, meaning that the San Andreas Fault is, is ready for another major event. Why is that? Yeah, there's no question the San Andreas is ready for another big earthquake. The last major damaging earthquake in Southern California was in 1857. We think that the recurrence interval um, is, is much shorter than the time that's passed since then. Up in San Francisco, the Haywood Fault has a recurrence interval of about 140 years, and the last earthquake was in 1868. So in both cases, you know, we could argue that we're due for another earthquake. So again, this is just a good reason for us all to revisit our emergency plans, make sure we have our emergency kits, and think about how good the buildings that we live and work in are and whether they will su survive the earthquake. We know whatever coast you're on in our country today, whether it's the East Coast looking at the hurricane or the West Coast thinking about earthquakes, it Great reminder about those emergency kits. Richard, it's always a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks for being with you.